Jay here for Stretford Paddock. Brentford won, Manchester United won. Joining me is my good friend, Mr. Stephen Alson. <sighs> Steve, I mean, we didn't deserve anything from that game, if we're being brutally honest. But in the 96th minute, when Mason Mount gets a goal, you think, happy days, we've got all three points. But then you remember, or then you realise, this is Manchester United this season, and this is what we do. I mean, what do you make of it? Honestly, it's just the same old story all season. And that's the sad reality of where we're at. And, you know, I'd done my review earlier and um, I said, yeah, I think the manager's got the structure of this team wrong. I wouldn't call it tactics because I don't think anyone goes, lads, <laughs> I'm going to tire them out with shooting and then we'll go and get a goal. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever said that in the history of management. But the structure that we play, obviously allow shots on our goal in literally record-breaking numbers. So I think something has to be done about that. I think the more you play McTominay alongside Maynou, you're basically playing a one-man midfield because Scott offers you nothing in terms of control in possession. He offers you some height defensively, but positionally he's just, he is not there. The, the defence has... It's on its like 700th iteration or whatever it is. Like, and there's no goals up front. I mean, it, for me, it all stems back to control because if you have control of the ball, you can then start creating chances. Do you know how many shots Hoyland managed? One, is it? One. Do you know how many Marcus managed? One, I think, which was about 25 One. yards out. How many Garnacho had? I'm going to guess zero. Yeah, zero. So you're looking at um, two shots across your entire forward line. You can't expect to win games of football if you don't have any shots in your... F like, these guys are picked for and paid for their ability to score goals. But you've got to give them more than no chances. Yeah. Like, ask, right, Ganacho, have a seat. So you didn't score any goals today? No, I had no shots, right. Whose fault's that? It's not Garnacho's usually. The little fucker can't wait to shoot when he gets the opportunity. He clearly didn't have the opportunity. So then you go, right, okay, so whose responsibility is it? It's the midfield. Right, what's the midfield doing? Not enough. And then you go back to the defence. Is What's the defence doing? Well, it's not the right defence. You know, we can't play out with the structure that we want. You miss Luke Shaw, you miss Martinez... You miss all your ball playing ability, and you flip it later on. Varane goes off, and now you're dealing with Maguire and Lindelof. What year is it? <laughs> like it's Ollie time in it, Ollie ball. You say, he, Ten Hag spent all of this money. Cool. Delo, Lindelof, Wambasaka, and Maguire is not an Eric Ten Hag defense. It's Ole no. Gunnar Solskjaer defense. Yeah. What do you do if you're Eric Tenag today? Because bang me head on my desk until I knock myself out. Probably it felt like today, like to me, it felt like yes, there's mitigating circumstances for certain players, like Manu wasn't helped enough in midfield, and you know Oiland didn't get enough service. But collectively, that was it was pretty poor across the board, really. Which from going from the Liverpool game to that is a worry, especially yeah, the when you've got game was similar. There were still too many chances. I mean, there was less in the Liverpool game, weirdly, yeah. less in the Liverpool game than has been on every single league game this season. But there were still a lot of chances that we give up. You... More than uh, more than a good club would, yeah. put it that way. Onana kept us in it with some big saves. Big saves. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. that could have been like, we got beat 4-0 last year. They had a better XG today than they had last year. That's it was a lot. more dominant performance today, factually, statistically, a more dominant performance from them today. They should have scored more goals today and, and we should have scored less than we scored today than um, than what happened last year when it was 4-0. Does this, as a fan, does this alter your opinion thinking around Eric Sanago, what's going on at all? Not really, because, I've look, if this is the first time this had happened, maybe or even the third time that, that this had happened. I saw this against Wolves in the fucking first game of the season and nothing has changed. So, 
ultimately, it is a disappointment. And this season, even if we end up with an FA Cup, there's, there's, you know, I, I don't think you call a season a disappointment, but you would, especially if you pick up silverware, which Arsenal haven't done in four years. I, I think nice. if you, if you look at what's actually happened, you have to. But far too many people want to go. He scored, he played well. He didn't score, he didn't play well. And the same thing goes with the manager. You didn't win, therefore the manager got it wrong. Sometimes the manager gets things wrong. Sometimes the manager gets things right and the players let him down. I don't necessarily think it's as black and white as as that at the moment with Ten Hag. There's clearly some structural issues that I put on his toes to fix. But just because that's his responsibility to fix and it's been bad all season, does that mean that you sack the guy? That's the issue that too many people go, so you're blaming Eric Ten Hag? Yes, I am. So Eric Ten Hag's got to go? Well, no, because there's like, you've just made a fucking massive leap. So that's what the next stage of that is. Yeah. No, this is still someone that's extremely early in his Manchester United career, has had to deal with more shit than any other manager that I can even fathom to think about. I'm saying he's got an issue that I want to see him fix. Yeah. Let's let him fix it. That's a big difference from saying there's an issue that he needs to fix. No, fuck it, get a new manager. Like, it doesn't work like that. Like, in season, it's very, very difficult to to pivot into something new. Uh, and, and to be honest, with the schedule that we have in pre-season, I don't even know how the fuck you do it in pre-season, to be brutally honest with you. You know, I, I find it hard to see when they get the opportunities to, to fix this. Certainly won't be this week with Chelsea and Liverpool coming up. Yeah. This week could be a fucking disaster, Jay. No, I, I agree. And this this is always the thing with United. You know, when you think you've hit rock bottom, the, the worst is yet to come. And it, it is weird. But but there's still that little bit of a inside me that goes, you know what? We, you never know with this team because you don't. And actually, even within this team that's underperforming and the results we've had, you've still got some players there that are very, very good footballers and can win you Do a you football Do you know why? Match. It's not happening, though. Go on. Because Spurs came from behind to win today. And that just tells me... We ain't doing it this year. No, I think I think I think in top four or top five, whatever it is, Champions League, we're not doing it. I still feel like this manager though can Oh can oh, oh go on. Oh, oh nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. Manchester City get relegated. Right. We get Champions League on account of coming sixth. Perfect. Yeah. That is it. You've never <laughs> And we get given those trophies we would have won if they hadn't cheated. I don't think that's going to happen. All right, I mean, that's not silly. to say I'm not going to celebrate them like it did. I just don't think that's going to happen. No. I think it's going to be like the Tour de France for about 15 years, where <laughs> who won? Who won that year? <laughs> just yeah, the whole uh, Alan Samson game it didn't happen. Um, we've got Chelsea and Liverpool coming up. Do you think we can turn yay. it around? Do you think? Do you th yay! Do you, do you have any confidence? Way, Go on. No fucking way will Liverpool be as bad as they were. When no, they, they won't. Came they, won't. they won't. They won't. You fearing the worst for these two games? Yeah. <laughs> Not as much <laughs> Chelsea because they're they're fucking comical. They're worse than us. Um, I think they are. And which you know, do you know what? When they beat me on fucking Thursday, yes, clip me up because it's still a fact. They're still comical. Yeah, right? no, they are. And, and that just proves how comical they are. That they're so bad they beat United. Yeah, <laughs> Liverpool. Yeah, that probably just gonna fucking ride us. There's probably no two ways around that. It's gonna be a fucking right fun day on Sunday. Yeah, it's gonna be great, isn't it? I'm looking forward to it. Getting absolutely trolled off a load of scousers. It's gonna be min. Um, but you know what? <sighs> Listen, another, here's on. what we can console ourselves on: that Harry Kane went to a team that's like basically just delivered league titles, like you bet them they couldn't. He's gone and delivered like a fucking genuinely incredible number of goals. He's sort of done his job and isn't going to win the fucking league. And I don't know about you, but I'm getting some serious shard and fraud out of that. I, I am, it might right. be the only thing. Might be and, the only thing I get this year. And you know what it is, right? The weird thing is, I don't even dislike Harry Kane. I don't, right? Uh, he's, he's so... I think it's funny. He's, I know it is. It's like, you've got one of the, like... Greatest goal scorers England's ever produced, like statistically. You've got a team, like you say, who are the most bankable title winners in the, in Europe, right? Even more than PSG or Celtic or 
anyone you can pick from the Portuguese, or even Ajax, haven't won 11 in a row, right? You cannot pick a more Literally, dominant you team. you don't get more of a banker. I don't even know if you can bet on who can win the league in Germany. No. I don't, <laughs> this, the bet start at who'll finish second. That's it. Like, <laughs> the, the start, you, 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 that's when you click on the app, that's all you get. And he's gone there and scored 30-odd goals or whatever by March, and he's not going to win the league. Like, he's just not. Like, he ain't going to do it. It's, it's, it's over, basically, isn't it? Well, they got like eight games left or whatever, and the 10 points behind. It's like, mate. The only points, I think it is. Oh, is it? The only thing I would say is, I hope, and I mean this, from the bottom of my heart, I hope he wins the Champions League this season. I hope he does, yeah? I'll be rooting for you, Harry. If you're listening, you're watching, get out there, roll your sleeves up, and win us that Champions League. Win it for everyone, yeah? Because <laughs> if you win that... I'll be celebrating like United won it because it means that that mob haven't done it again. Uh, Steve, it's always a pleasure. My brother, when are you back in with us? When are you back in the studio with us? Do you know? Maybe Tuesday. Tuesday. Right, we'll catch up with Steve Tuesday. Uh, are the highlights of Paddock FC, do you put highlights up when you lose? Are you that guy? No? Yeah. Yeah, yeah all right. I mean, I'm not happy about it, but, but we fucking do. If people have a bit of Shannon Freud at uh, Paddock FC expense, go and check out Steve. On his channel, go and check out Stephen House TV as well. See his review and see all his scouting reports and have a laugh. He'll do his five things as well uh, over the next 24 hours. So make sure you check that out. That's been Stephen House and I've been Jay Moy. This has been a review of Brentford getting a point against the mighty Manchester United. See you soon.